For too long, these wanted fugitives have been eluding justice. However, their time on the run has ended. We'll be discussing five wanted fugitives on the FBI's most wanted or state most wanted lists and their recent captures, as well as the crimes that got them on the list in the first place. Let's get into it. Case number five, Greg Lawson. A Louisiana man who spent more than half of his life on the run has now been apprehended after 30 years on the FBI's most wanted list. 63-year-old Greg Lawson was located in Uatulco, Mexico, and was brought back to U.S. soil on September 19, 2023. Tonight, a man wanted out of Bienville Parish for more than three decades is now in police custody. This afternoon, we learned that Greg Lawson is now in custody of the Bienville Parish Sheriff's Office. FBI agents arrested him in Mexico. Lawson faced a trial for shooting a man back in 1991 left the court right before the jury headed back with a guilty verdict and had not been seen since until now. Look for the first alert on our News 12 app once we get new details. Lawson had been in the middle of a trial for gunning down his childhood best friend Seth Garlington on April 24, 1990, when he just left the county courthouse before the jury had come back with their verdict. In 2007, the FBI announced a $10,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of Greg Lawson, and three decades passed before a credible tip cashed in that reward. In coordination with law enforcement in Mexico, the FBI located Lawson, who had been using the identity of a deceased man from Alabama, and were able to swiftly arrest Lawson, who apparently laughed as he was being cuffed. Once back in Louisiana, Lawson was charged with an additional felony for bail jumping, and he is being held at the Claiborne Parish Detention Center while he awaits further court proceedings. Douglas A. Williams Jr., special agent in charge of FBI New Orleans, said in a statement, quote, We want to thank our partners and the public in this case, who never gave up hope that justice could be served for Mr. Lawson's victim. There's no doubt that Mr. Lawson might still be in the wind if our partners in Mexico had not been willing to deal with this so swiftly. Case number four, Malik Kalu. On July 23, 2023, one of Canada's most wanted fugitives was located and arrested in a Detroit, Michigan suburb. In a coordinated arrest, Malik Kalu was extradited back to Windsor, Ontario in connection to the 2022 drive-by shooting that killed 24-year-old Daniel Squalls. Malik Kalu was a semi-professional basketball player who played in the junior teams but never made it to the NBA, unlike his brother, Maurice Kalu. At the time of the murder, Malik was 26 years old. Kalu was on the run for nine months. Video surveillance had placed him at the scene of the crime. Kalu had also been on release for another violent crime, which Windsor Police have stated is another reason to keep violent offenders in custody while awaiting further court proceedings. He had been added to the Canadian Be On The Lookout or BOLO program's Top 25 Most Wanted Fugitives. In his time on the run, there had been a $6,000 reward for information leading to his arrest, and it is unclear if it was a tip that located him. Daniel Squall's mother, Tylena, said of the arrest, quote, I shouted, I jumped, I cried, I'm just so excited now. Daniel's finally going to get some justice. It appears that the shooting may have been prompted by a custody disagreement. Daniel Squall was with a woman and his daughter, and the woman also had a child with Kalu. The family had recently informed Kalu of their relocating to the U.S., but because of Kalu's criminal history, he wouldn't be able to see his child freely. The lead detective on the case, Staff Sergeant Joe Fadul, said in addition to the surveillance footage, there is forensic evidence that directly ties Kalu to the crime scene. He also stated that he may seek additional charges for anyone who aided Kalu while he was on the run, quote, There is no doubt in my mind that people have helped him evade capture for nine months. This could not have been done by himself. We will continue this investigation into anybody who assists Mr. Kalu in any sort of way to avoid capture. The gun used in the murder was not found at the time of the arrest. Case number three, Edgar Salvatore Cassian Garcia and Araceli Medina. 
For two years, 34-year-old Edgar Salvatore Cassian Garcia and 38-year-old Araceli Medina had been on the run after fleeing Washington State. The pair had been the first fugitive couple to appear on the U.S. Marshals' Top 15 Most Wanted list. They were wanted for various crimes relating to child abuse allegations, and it sparked an international manhunt, not just for them, but also for their five children. The children were considered endangered. The situation began to unfold in 2020 when two little girls were discovered abandoned at a gas station in Tijuana, Mexico. The girls, aged 8 and 3, were taken into child protective custody, but the girls were extremely traumatized. It took child welfare experts six months to get the girls to trust them enough to explain what had happened to them. The girls were sisters, and they had continually asked officials if they had found their 7-year-old brother. The eldest girl eventually revealed their names and the extensive amount of physical and sexual torture used by Edgar Salvatore Cassian Garcia and Araceli Medina. Until recently, the three children had lived with their maternal grandmother. It had been who the three kids had always lived with until May 2020, when Cassian Garcia and Medina took custody of the three. From there, the girls described the absolute hell that they had been faced with when they lived with the pair. They described being trafficked out to strange people, abused, and just unimaginable horrors. Law enforcement in Washington located the couple and began to investigate. When officers arrived at the family's apartment, Cassie and Garcia told law enforcement that their son, the boy that the two girls had been desperate for police to find, was staying with relatives in California. However, the boy was not found, and when law enforcement went back to arrest the couple, they discovered that they had fled to Mexico. At the time of their escape, Medina had visitation of her four children from another relationship and her infant son with Cassie and Garcia. The couple were initially wanted on first-degree sexual assault and three counts of assault of a child. However, on February 5, 2022, hikers found the skeletal remains of seven-year-old Edgar Jr., the missing child. Another charge was added to the warrant, first-degree murder. Based on the evidence found on the remains and testimony from the other two girls, Edgar Jr. had been tortured to death and both physically and sexually abused by both Cassian Garcia and Medina, but also other individuals. Marshals elevated the fugitive investigation when Edgar Jr.'s remains were found, and there was a $20,000 cash reward for information leading to the couple's arrest. In February 2023, the reward was bumped up to $50,000, and it was only a few weeks later when law enforcement got a tip that would eventually lead to the couple's capture. On March 31, 2023, the couple were captured along with their five missing children. Detective John Davis of the Kenwick Police Department said of the situation, quote, This is the worst child abuse case I've come across in nine years as a detective. What we've seen from this investigation, they, Garcia and Medina, had no problem hurting children to outright murder. The crimes that Araceli Medina and Edgar Cassian Garcia are charged with are heinous, and we commend the unwavering dedication of law enforcement. This successful rescue is a testament to the critical importance of collaboration and community involvement in safeguarding our most vulnerable population. The duo were extradited back to Washington, where they now face their charges. No word yet on further court proceedings. They're being held in custody while they await further court appearances. Their bail has been set to $5 million each. Case number two, Michael Anthony Baltimore. It was in 2021 when Michael Anthony Baltimore was added to the U.S. Marshals' top 15 most wanted list. Baltimore had previously been on the reality TV show 90 Day Fiancé, in which he was featured working as a barber at the GQ Barbershop in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I spoke with Cumberland County's district attorney a little bit earlier today, and he told me that the investigation was going into the situation here that happened at GQ Barbershop on Hanover Street. You can see the flowers outside here, paying tribute to the person who was fatally shot at this location, as well as the other person who was critically wounded in this shooting. Now, Carlisle police are set to answer more questions about the shooting at a press conference announced for 2 p.m. Again, they're going to be answering more questions about what happened here 
Police have not released the deceased name or any suspect information at this point. Police said Saturday night that the gunman was not in custody. The shooting happened around 7.30 p.m. Saturday. A lot of people may have been out here on Hanover Street at the time when this incident happened. Again, Cumberland County District Attorney says the investigation was going well into the shooting and what happened here. We're expecting more information from Carlisle Police. Later today, we'll have the latest on WGAL. In Carlisle, Tom Lehman, WGAL News 8. Even featured on the show were his co-workers and boss, longtime friend and mentor, Kendall Jerome Cook. After the show had aired, however, Baltimore and Cook had a falling out, and on May 22, 2021, Baltimore went into the barber shop and open fired, killing Cook and injuring another employee at the shop. Baltimore then fled, and the surviving victim had been able to positively identify Baltimore as the shooter. First of all, good afternoon. <clears throat> on Saturday, 5-22-2021, at approximately 19.30 hours, Members of the Carlisle Police Department responded to the GQ Barbershop, located at 128 North Hanover Street within the borough of Carlisle for a shooting. The Carlisle Police Department, along with members of the Pennsylvania State Police, the Newville Borough Police, North Middleton Township Police, the Cumberland County District Attorney's Office, the Cumberland County Forensic Services, and the Cumberland County Coroner's Office, all assisted in securing the crime scene and the collection of evidence. Inside the barbershop, officers and EMS attempted to perform life-saving me measures to Mr. Kendall Cook, age 39, and a second shooting victim, Mr. Anthony White, age 41, who was located outside the rear of the barbershop. After being treated, Mr. White was transported to the hospital by EMS. Mr. Cook was deceased at the scene. On behalf of the Carlisle Borough officials and the entire Carlisle Borough Police Department, I wish to extend our deepest condolences to the family of Mr. Kendall Cook. An arrest warrant has been issued for Michael Anthony Baltimore, date of birth of 9-16-1978, for a homicide, attempted homicide, and firearms violations. His whereabouts are unknown at this time. I will remind each of you that Mr. Baltimore is our primary suspect. However, he is presumed innocent until proven guilty. Exact motives are not known at this time. However, this shooting appears to have been the result of a personal conflict between the shooter and the victims. Mr. Baltimore should not be approached if seen, and he's considered armed and dangerous. This investigation is ongoing and rapidly evolving. Therefore, there are some facts that will not be discussed. This type of incident in the center of the borough shocks the conscience of the citizens of Carlisle. The difference between this homicide investigation and some of the investigations in our recent past is the level of cooperation received from the public. Baltimore was wanted on charges of assault, homicide, and parole violations. He had an extensive criminal history that went back to the 90s and while on the run was considered armed and dangerous. It was later announced that there was a $25,000 reward for information leading to an arrest, but it wasn't needed because six months after that announcement, Baltimore went into a restaurant in Davies, Florida, and started a physical altercation with another patron there. In the restaurant, an employee trying to break up the fight got hit in the face with the back of a knife, and the suspect fled, claiming to be retrieving a gun. It was then that law enforcement was called. Baltimore fled, but was later arrested on January 20th, 2023. Upon his arrest, he was fingerprinted, and it was then that Davy police realized they had a wanted fugitive in their custody. Baltimore had attempted to give officers a fake name. Also in his possession were drugs, a handgun, and three fake IDs. Michael Anthony Baltimore is being held in Florida, where he faces charges there, and it's likely he will be extradited back to Pennsylvania to face the murder charge there as well. 
Case number one. A war criminal wanted for his participation in the 1994 Rwandan genocide was recently discovered hiding in South Africa. Fulgence Keishima had been on the run since 2001 when it was discovered that he had orchestrated the killing of more than 2,000 men, women, and children on April 15, 1994 at a church in Rwanda. An estimated 800,000 people were killed in 90 days in what is described as one of the most brutal genocides in human history. It was revealed that during the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwandans that Kaishima attempted to burn a church with 2,000 Tutsi people hiding inside. Failing to ignite the structure, he helped to use a bulldozer to collapse the building, killing all those who sought refuge inside. He was charged with genocide, conspiracy to commit genocide, and crimes against humanity charges. However, when law enforcement went to arrest him, he had already fled. The United States government themselves had offered a $5 million reward for information leading to his arrest. For over two decades, multiple agencies worked tirelessly to find Keishima, and it was while monitoring family members that they eventually had word that he was hiding in South Africa. Keishima had been using a forged identity and was working on a grape farm in Cape Town. When he was discovered and arrested on May 19, 2023, he initially denied his identity but eventually said to arresting officers, I've been waiting a long time to be arrested. Fulgence Keishima was a fugitive for more than 20 years. His arrest ensures that he will finally face justice for his alleged crimes. IRMCT Chief Prosecutor Serge Bramertz, who led the investigation, said in a statement to the media, quote, Genocide is the most serious crime known to humankind. The international community has committed to ensuring that its perpetrators will be prosecuted and punished. This arrest is a tangible demonstration that this commitment does not fade and that justice will be done, no matter how long it takes. Keishima's arrest is the fifth in recent years of topped officials. Agencies are still looking to arrest three more. Keishima is being held in Cape Town custody while he awaits his trial and sentencing. He faces life in prison. So what do you think? Is this something you would like to see more of? Let me know in that comment section down below. And if you see anything you want me to cover next, let me know. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for being here and supporting what I do. I'll see you on the next video. Stay safe out there. Goodbye.